it really wouldn't be an episode of Tabs if I didn't have everybody's favorite disposable cannon fodder, the Hobbits, face off against the newly strongest thing in the game. $20,000 for a Dark Peasant. It's not what I remember from the Dark Peasant, but he's got some very active tentacles. It should be interesting. What exactly is he doing? Is he doing anything? I mean, other than getting smothered in the Hobbit gangbang? Wait, what? I expected spikes to come up out of the ground or, or, or tentacle piercing or anything. What's up guys, welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator. And for today's episode, we've got a lot of new, strange, unpredictable modded units to check out. And I don't know if we can get to all of them today, because I'm not sure how many of them there are. To be perfectly honest, there's a lot as you could probably tell, but if you end up seeing a unit here that doesn't make it into the video, then be sure to leave a like on the episode, because then I'll keep returning until we get to experience all of this nonsense. That being said, there are definitely some units that I need to fit into this video. Why is this raptor showing us its sweet bow staff skills? That is the question that we're gonna start off with. Okay, that comment about the sweet bow staff skills was meant to be a joke, but apparently he's called Monk Raptor, which makes me think that he's probably doing that on purpose? Like, I just assumed he was broken. We've seen mammoths do that. We've seen horses do that. Clearly, they're not supposed to. It's just anytime anything breaks in this game, they kind of have a seizure and spaz out. But he's actually showing immense prowess with that weapon before the battle begins. And we're going to have him face off against Knight and his friends. The Knight certainly does have a lot of friends. I don't know if this is going to be a very fair fight for them. <laughs> Oh, of course the monk will go straight for the priests. Not a big fan of Christianity. What is he doing? I mean, other than whatever kind of weird tornado talent this is. As if raptors weren't broken enough. Please don't jump off the edge. You're so majestic. I want to see you win this so badly. This is hands down the stupidest unit I have ever seen in this game. And we're only just getting started. I promised you guys last episode that we would continue making progress through the challenging campaign. And I am going to use these units to do that. But I'm also going to jump back and forth between that and the sandbox whenever something sparks an idea. Like a ton of monk raptors fighting against one another because that seems incredibly broken and the world is already shaking before the match starts. I don't even really want to know how this is gonna work. They don't even all have the same voice. Some of them sound like random farmers and peasants and then... Like, others sound like vampires and... <laughs> when in all reality, they're dinosaurs. <laughs> At least I think they're dinosaurs. I am constantly amazed at what people can create in this game. This isn't a video game. This is art. <laughs> art in motion. I really need to see if a monk raptor can turn into a tornado. <laughs> really, he's practically already a tornado. Look at him. He, he just needs a little bit of encouragement against the new tribal faction. Which reminds me, a lot of people really enjoyed the last episode. Not only did people appreciate the weird new faction, but they also got tabs for free, which is great. You know, I'm always hoping to find sponsorships that'll not only be well received, but are also beneficial. Just try not to break the game like I'm about to. I'm hoping that the cheerleaders can get to him. Of course they can't. He's so spasmy that his own team can't even keep up with him. Where are you going? It's in a different area code. Oh, they're all dead. It's probably for the best that you don't turn into a tornado. Okay, just, just a little bit outnumbered. He's a monk, not a god. Speaking of gods, I think we have a couple of new ones. We've already taken a look at Apollo and Thor, but now we have Neptune, who I think is the Roman version of Poseidon. 
right? Poseidon is Greek, Neptune is Roman, and Thor is gonna smash his face in with a lightning hammer. Okay, swing and a miss there, Thor. Strike two, you got this. There we go. <laughs> so, just to be clear, Neptune kinda swings around a pitchfork with one hand, calls it a trident, and what, sniffs dirt? What, what exactly makes you a god? <laughs> I mean, he's getting pierced with a lot of lightning and still trucking along, which is pretty impressive, but he won. How the hell did he win? It must just be that Neptune does a lot of damage, but doesn't do anything flashy, right? Because he costs less than Thor. You would expect him to lose there. But either way, we don't need to worry about the quarrels of the gods. We're going to move on to a level called A Warm Welcome, which completely bone zoned me last episode. Really, I had to quit. I just had to give up because they have so many units and I have such little money to beat them with. And lightsabers. <laughs> this is what's going to make the difference this time, okay? I refuse to believe that futuristic space wizard swords are going to lose against loin cloths, it sticks, and stones. What? How did you get your hands on a lightsaber and yet your feet are wrapped in potato bags? And where is your neck? <laughs> this is seriously pissing me off, okay? You guys are the world's worst Jedi. You are Jedi, right? You didn't just buy that after going to see the latest movie or something like that. Okay, then. Maybe I'm looking a little bit too far into the future, right? We shouldn't be using something from our future to beat them. We should be using something from their future to beat them which is our present. So I'm really just looking for a reason to shoot them with a gun. <laughs> we have a machine gun and the PPSH is way more effective against bare nips than I would have expected. <gasps> oh yeah, I could definitely get used to semi-automatic gunfire in this game. I mean, he's still dressed like a peasant, but it's a Russian gun. Next up, we have a level called Phalanx, with a definite attempt at a Phalanx. Usually, you would be shield to shoulder with the person next to you, right? There aren't going to be any holes, but this is a little loose. I'm seeing a lot of fear in those spears, and for good reason, because they're going to have to face off against... Oh no, I can't afford Leonidas! Oh, what do you mean? That would have been perfect here! Okay, we're going to have Leonidas face off against a Phalanx soon. Why can I not afford a 1600 unit? They've got like $5,000 worth of units. That's so overpowered. No wonder this is such a challenging campaign. Okay, we'll hit them with the Molotov cocktail, right? They're nice and tightly formed together. I would imagine the fire will spread. <laughs> also, all of these modded ranged units back up which is incredibly overpowered. You wouldn't think that moving backwards is a very strong strategy to adopt, but it just means that the enemy never reaches you. Are they not all extra crispy? Oh, missed one. Okay, there we go. Do you see what I mean though? Like best case scenario, they gave me about a third as much money to make an army. I'm guessing that's where the challenge of the challenging campaign comes from. But now we can afford two Leonidas's against their phalanx, which is much better than zero. I have no idea what this guy is gonna do other than yell and kick people in the tits, hopefully. <gasps> or die. Yeah, I mean, technically that's accurate to the story. I just expected it to be a little bit more epic beforehand. I know Leonidas isn't exactly the type for fair fights, okay, so I'm not going to even things out fully, but 10 versus 1 should be at least a little bit better, right? He's facing off against Hoplites now, so hopefully he can kick something or just jump in there like he's crowd surfing at a concert. <laughs> I mean, he's fighting this time. That's an improvement. What a squirrely old dude. He just keeps flopping around and then people die. What a strange unit. He doesn't fight like a hoplite at all. Moving on to a level called Sides and Potions, and 
Boy, oh boy, if you know me, you know that I have a burning hatred for the Harvester. They are so overpowered. No melee unit can beat them, I swear, but maybe one of the new ones can. I kind of want to try a big melee unit like the Marauder. I don't really know what he does, but he looks pretty formidable, right? He's got a uh, shield and why is there fire? What? Where, where did the fire come from? Do not tell me that this mod made it so that all of the potion sellers throw Molotov cocktails instead of silly gas. <laughs> this might actually be impossible. There might be no way to beat this with only $1,500. Like, we could try ranged units, but even then, we still have to mow down the harvesters before we get torched, and I don't see that being a possibility. <laughs> because now, the potion sellers are a one-shot kill. Oh! We have modded archers! They're gonna back up! That is good to know. This completely changes the game. Next up, we have a level called Priests, which definitely does have a few priests, but I'm a lot more concerned about all of the modded squires. Again, don't really know what to expect. A unit that we've seen a whole lot, but I don't know what's been changed about them. Is it that they have gauntlets now? Do they always have gauntlets? I didn't have any plans on shooting, stabbing, or blowing up their hands, so we should be fine. I'm really pissed that we don't have enough money in these levels to buy anything cool, though. Like, I want $20,000 to buy a dark peasant, or $4,000 to buy a skeleton giant, or, I don't know, new gods? There's a whole bunch of sweet new stuff. We'll try a katana master. How about that? What exactly do you do? Hopefully you don't cut off hands, because you might run into some resistance. <laughs> Just a little bit, though. You're quite the large fellow, and... Okay, he's quick. He does a lot of damage. He's nimble. Hopefully, he's resilient because he's getting pounded. They're definitely getting their licks in before they get cut in half. All of these units aren't really mapped to fight. They all just kind of flail. You know, they swing around. They do damage one way or another, but... There's only so much you could do with mods, and he actually lost. You're supposed to go for the priest first, dummy. You always gotta take out the healer. I can't even begin to guess what a juggernaut is. Add that to the list. But why don't we try a couple of gunmen? Because if they are modded, then they should fire and back up. Fire and back up. You guys can just flee to the woods and keep gunning them down. <laughs> Listen, your faith may be your armor, but it's not bulletproof. Moving on to a level called Arrow, and I can't imagine where they got that name from. They chose to use a bunch of melee units in the form of an arrow, rather than a bunch of archers. Either way, we've got $2,500 this time, which means we can afford something cool like the new Minotaur? He's armed now. I'm not sure how he holds two axes with his weird little hooves, but... That's fine by me. And I've even got some money left over. We could afford, uh, maybe a Roman legionary to go with him? Sure, why not? We need more cheap modded units. I want to have armies of stuff, not just singular things. Okay, so... He still acts like a minotaur in that he flops around and charges through stuff, but now he does it with sharp weapons, which is certainly a benefit. <laughs> Seems to be somewhat effective. Holy crap, that's actually a little vicious. Moving on to a level called More Wheelbarrows. And I definitely do see the wheelbarrows back there, but I'm a lot more concerned about the Molotov throwing potion sellers. It's funny how something stupid like that can really change the way you gotta play a game. We're in some serious trouble. We have money this time though, $4,500, which means we can get Kicking Jin, who I believe is a big fan of punching, but I'm not entirely sure. And we can also get Mushashi? Gazuntight? I don't know. <laughs> Should be interesting to see how these two float in the air. What? Uh, Kicking Jin, shouldn't you be kicking right about now? You're on fire. Holy crap! I never even saw Mushashi! He's just flying around all over the- Holy crap! Did you see that move? 
I gotta try that again, except for this time, we're gonna go with full-blown Mushashis. I assumed that the more expensive one who was hovering would be more interesting, but this guy's got two badass weapons and he's spinning around. Like, that last attack, he, he chucked somebody in the air with his katana and then back kicked him out of existence. They're on fire and they don't care. They're the ones doing all the kicking. They're the kicking mushashis. <laughs> That's a really cool unit. Let's be perfectly honest, they're never gonna give me enough money to buy cool stuff. And the more I see of these units, the more I want. So we're just gonna have to jump into the sandbox and try stuff like Ares, new god, a god of war. That sounds pretty cool. We're not gonna have him face off against Apollo. Even if they cost almost the same amount, Apollo's a bit of a punk. He's just gonna run away, I already know that. What if we have him face off against a couple of Ignisword? That's interesting. Oh, they're like heavily armored, dual-wielding fire swords! <laughs> the God of War didn't expect that, except he's doing pretty well. What? He's literally lying down, burning on the battlefield, and doesn't seem to care all that much. <laughs> I constantly think they're dead, but then I remember that this hasn't come up yet, so they're really just taking a breather. I I, I gotta sort this out. We I gotta try these units one at a time. We'll stick with the Ignisword for now, because I haven't seen full armor like that in this game, and fire swords are definitely interesting. We know that harvesters are overpowered against melee units, and they're a unit that we've seen plenty of, so we don't need to focus on them, but I want to have a relatively fair fight and see if the Ignisword can pummel them. I really hope they can. That armor is super cool. I don't even know what unit that's from. Like, even the knight doesn't have armor like that. They're covered in crosses and colors, but this is just full-blown metal and they absolutely torched them. We can try a similar battle, except for this time we'll sub in Ares, because again, I didn't really see what he does. I think the prescription contacts he's wearing are getting to him, though. <laughs> can we maybe just slow you down a little bit, Ares? Oh, that's a bit too googly. God of war or god of Stupid. Nope, I guess it is the god of war because he just moonwalked back onto the map. Watching this in slow motion is so much more interesting because his movements seem deliberate, but they're clearly not. All right, let's see how well you can swim. My guess is not well. I'm a little worried that this one is gonna break right off the bat. We're gonna try a skeleton giant versus a non-skeleton giant. His sword is much, much bigger. Why is that? Oh, oh, that doesn't seem very fair. He's got so much reach, but no mobility. He can barely stand up. I mean, not having muscles probably isn't much help there, but shouldn't you be backflipping right now? Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The samurai must only backflip stomp when there's stuff underneath his feet, you know, like little units. But when he's fighting another giant, he just acts like a regular samurai, but bigger. I feel like people would be pretty pissed in the comments if I tried out the lightsaber and yet didn't give them their time to shine. So what if we have a full-blown lightsaber battle? You guys all have the exact same color saber. That's not usually how this works. They're usually all different. Is everyone dead? Oh, they're actually dead. I thought it was another one of those moments where they all kind of flop over. They'll get up eventually. Nope, nope. Those are very lethal weapons in the hands of very stupid people. It really wouldn't be an episode of Tabs if I didn't have everybody's favorite disposable cannon fodder, the Hobbits, face off against the newly strongest thing in the game. $20,000 for a Dark Peasant. It's not what I remember from the Dark Peasant, but he's got some very active tentacles. It should be interesting. What exactly is he doing? 
Is he doing anything? I mean, other than getting smothered in the Hobbit gangbang? Wait, what? I expected spikes to come up out of the ground or, or, or tentacle piercing or anything. There's nothing, he's just punching them all. What is this? No, you're not the dark peasant, you're an imposter. Rip him apart. Like a bunch of piranhas. He's really big, I think. It's hard to tell. Hobbits are like seven year olds. Everybody looks huge next to them. He might be pretty big. This could honestly go on forever. Not a single hobbit has died. I don't think he does any damage. I, I'm just gonna have to call the fight a draw. Well, if that wasn't disappointing, then I honestly don't know what is. We're gonna have to try the juggernaut. They're pretty expensive. They've got guns. Again, they're peasants with guns. Okay, so they shoot a little bit. That's not all that impressive. Oh, then they shoot a lot. That's more impressive. So they're kind of like Artemis, except with guns. <laughs> Interesting. So they have a bit of a misfire, but then they get their act together and unload. <gasps> I mean, the bullets are going through them. Do you see that? It's going clean through their bodies, which seems really, really strong. I mean, Getting hooked in the lips like that probably still hurts, right? <laughs> this might have not been a fair matchup. Oh no, the guns are good. You know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And like I said, I didn't get to all of the modded units today, but we did get to quite a few of them. And if you guys wanna see me continue screwing around with all of these weird new units, then be sure to leave a like in the video, let me know, and if the video gets a bunch of support, then I'll return for more soon. But thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.